I've got this beautiful piece of mahogany that I'm gonna to use to make my snowflakes. Whenever I make these, I like to use one by sixes. That's a five and a half inch wide board. First thing I wanna do is just cut this down into about 24 to 26 inches long. Next, you wanna tip your blade to a 30 degree bevel. Accuracy is really important here. The closer you can get it to exactly 30 degrees, the better. I like to use one of these digital angle finders. Of course, keep in mind on this side of the blade, it's gonna read 60 degrees. First, I'm gonna cut about eight inches off of one end. I'm gonna use this piece to make a push block. And I can set this piece aside. I'll be coming back to that in a minute. Now what I wanna do is cut out a series of strips in this piece that are all the same width as the thickness of this board. So to do that, what I wanna do is set up a stop block on my rip fence. Remember, you don't wanna use your rip fence in combination with your miter gauge unless you've got some sort of a block like this that's gonna provide some distance between the cutoff piece and the rip fence so that it can't get trapped in there and kick back at you. So first thing I wanna do is just kind of run a test here. Looks about right. So with this block of wood down here on this side of the blade, I'll just press my workpiece up against that and then feed it through the saw. So to test this out, what I wanna do is flip this around so that the end grain is up, and then I can flip it around this way and see how close I got. And you can see that there's a little bit smaller, so I just need to make this cutoff piece slightly wider. So I'll just tap my fence over slightly. It's like about there. That looks like a pretty good fit right there. Now I can just continue cutting a bunch of strips. You're gonna need six strips for each type of snowflake that you make. That ended up giving me 12 of these strips plus an extra one. I can use that to run some tests on. And you can kind of see how this is all going to fit together. Something like that. Okay, now I can get back to that cutoff piece and make that push block. This is really simple. I just cut out a few thin strips of wood and I'm gonna hot glue them to this piece. So here's one of my work pieces, my strips, and I, I want these pieces to overlap like this, but you know, not go all the way off the edge. So right about there is where I want these. So I'm gonna place a dab of hot glue here, like that, and then I can do this one. Yeah. Then what I wanna do is take this third strip and glue it on to this back side. And this is gonna act as like a push cleat. It's gonna help push, uh, hold the piece as I'm sending it through the saw. You'll see that here in just a second. What I wanna make sure is that it's not coming out too far past that piece either. So right about in there should be fine. All right, and that is all there is to making that push block. Now comes the fun part. And this is a lot like, you know, those, those snowflakes that you cut out of paper, you know, you fold it up first and then you make some cuts and you never really know what that snowflake is gonna look like until you unfold it. And it's the same way with these. What you're gonna wanna do is make a series of grooves along each face of each of these pieces and setting your blade at various just random angles. It doesn't matter what those angles are, that's kind of part of the magic. And then you're gonna set your blade depth at various depths also. So the key to being successful at this is making sure that you do the exact same procedure on each of these six strips and on 
the same face on each strip. So what I've done is I've lined these up so that all of the face grain here is on top so that I know that I can pass these through one at a time and I'll be making that same cut and then I can flip it around and I can cut on the end grain. They will all be the same. So I first cut, I'm just gonna tip this blade to like 25 degrees maybe. Use the push block to keep your workpiece pressed down and against your rip fence and the cleat in the back will help push it through. So you can put these together and kind of get a sneak peek about what it's gonna look like and check your progress. This one's coming along nicely. I think what I'd like to do is cut some more inside of here to kind of open up that center a little bit. And of course you can set this up to make different patterns depending on how you arrange these. So for instance, I could just flip this one like that. And this like that. This one for a completely different look. Once you've figured out how you want these oriented, you can glue them together. I find that the easiest way to do this is to glue these together in pairs. Let those dry and then glue the entire assembly together. And the only trick here is just make sure that you don't put so much glue on that it fills up all of those grooves. You just want a thin layer. You can clamp these together with rubber bands or masking tape works fine too. Now I can glue these all together into a big snowflake log. And if you're wondering, I'm using this weld bond glue rather than my yellow wood glue, just because this dries clear. Once you've got that all glued together and dry, it's a good chance to give it a sanding on these outside edges and inside of these grooves a little bit because once you slice this all up, it'll be kind of too delicate to get in there. Okay, to slice these up on your table saw, you're gonna to wanna to replace your regular insert blade with a zero clearance insert blade. This will prevent the individual snowflakes from falling down into your saw. So I'll slice these up using my miter gauge and to get them all the exact same thickness, I'm gonna use this piece of wood here and set that about as thick as I want these to be. I like to have them pretty thin, you know? and lock that in. You just want a piece of wood here that's wide enough that when the cutoff piece falls off, it won't potentially get caught and fly back at you. So now, the problem here is that when I start cutting these down, when it gets towards the end here, there's not gonna be a lot of room to hold on to here without getting my fingers really close to that blade and I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is just take one end of this and hot glue it to the end of this two by four. Now I'll be able to safely cut this real close to the end. These snowflakes make great Christmas ornaments, of course, but one thing I've done with them is strung a bunch of them together and wrap them around the tree, kind of like garland. And if you're interested in earning a little side income, you can sell these as ornaments for anywhere between two and up to $10 a piece. 
And here's my second batch. This design was a lot different, I, much more symmetrical. I don't know, I like them both, but I think I actually like that one a little bit better. And out of both of those, I was able to get 15 snowflakes out of each one. I'm not gonna apply a few coats of spray lacquer. I'm not gonna bother sanding the faces of these, they'll be fine. With those dry, I'm buffing them out with a piece of craft paper. Don't forget, if you're interested in getting started in woodworking, please check out my free guide on how to set up a shop for under $1,000. Head over to mytoollist.com. Thanks for watching, everybody.